Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2016 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So please be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. So let's take a read. So it says, Jose Choice Meats is a butcher shop owned and operated by Jose Martinez. On 1 May 2015, he presented the following information. Now we have to do a cash book. And these are the opening balances, right? So both cash and bank are assets. And assets have debit balances at start. Now, of course, in the case of the bank, you can have an overdraft, which is a liability, which would have a balance brought down on the credit side. But in this case, they did not indicate anything about there being an overdraft. So we put both balances on the debit side. Okay, let's go through these transactions and see what goes on what side. So it says, during the month of May, the following transactions occurred. So on May the 2nd, we have Tasteful Restaurant bought fish on credit with 900, less a 10% frequent buyer discount. Okay, so first of all, Tasteful Restaurant is probably one of Jose's customers, and they bought fish on credit from Jose. Now, if they bought fish from us on credit, it means we are selling to them on credit, which would need to be recorded in the sales journal. That's a credit sale. And credit sales are recorded in the sales journal, not in the cash book. So that transaction is not going to go in the cash book. All right, let's go down. So on the third now, we sold 145 worth of lamb for cash. Right, so that's a cash sale. That means money is coming in, which is going to be recorded on the debit side. So on the debit side, under cash, we're going to see 145, and it's going to be sales in the details column, because that's where the money came from. We sold lamb for cash, cash sales. On the 5th, we paid 510 for electricity by check. So that's a payment which is going to go on the credit side and it's going to go on the bank column. So let's put it there one time. So again, it's under the, on the credit side because payments reduce the amount of money in our account. Bank is an asset. To record a reduction in an asset, you have to credit the account. So on the credit side on the bank, you're going to see 510. What did we pay? We paid electricity. Okay, next. On the 5th, we're also seeing paid shop assistant 580 cash for wages. So again, if we are making a payment, our cash is decreasing. Cash is an asset, and to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see under the cash column on the credit side, 580, what did we pay? We paid wages. Okay, what next? This is a long, longish one. So it says, Mr. Martinez cashed a business check for 1360 from which he paid 360, A360 water bill for his home. The balance remained in his cash till. So first things first, a cash till is a cash register. So he took out 1,360 from bank. So let's understand that. So he's, he's gone to the bank and taken out 1,360. So bank is decreasing. So we need to go on the credit side on the bank and put 1,360, right? So you're seeing 1360, you're seeing cash because it came out of cash. Sorry, it was going to cash and you're seeing C because it's a contra entry. So 1360 is going into cash and then we're taking out 360 from that to pay the private water bill. All right, so let's get the first thing going there, which is the 1360 being put into cash, right? So cash is increasing. So on the debit side on the cash, you're seeing 1360, how much? Where did it come from? It came from bank and it's a contra entry. So you're seeing a C. Now that 360 that Mr. Martinez used to pay for his private water bill, that's drawings. So that means that money is being taken out of cash for his personal use. So if it's being taken out of cash, it means cash is decreasing. So on the credit side, under the cash column, you're going to see 360 and it will say drawings because that is where the money was, that is what the money was used for. All right, let's scroll on a bit more on top here. So it says, sold 1500 worth of seafood on credit to Joyce T. Right, so it says sold goods on credit. That's a credit sale. It'll go in the sales journal, not a cash transaction. All right, next we have bought 1,700 worth of meats from wholesale suppliers on credit. These were the credit terms given. So again, this is a credit purchase. It's not a cash transaction. So therefore, we will <clears throat> not be recording it inside of here. Okay, now on the 21st of May, Joyce T settled her account by cash, earning a 3% discount. Hmm, okay, let's go back up to Joyce T. All right, so it says Joyce T, right, 1500 worth of seafood on credit. If she settled her account by cash, earning a 3% discount, it means she's paying us cash. So what we would have to do is go on the debit side to record that receipt, but it says a 3% discount. Now, this is a cash discount. So that will go 
under the discount allowed column. So you're going to find 3% of 1,500, which is 45, and subtract that from the 1,500, which leaves us with 1,455, I believe. All right, so let's put that in on the debit side. All right, so under cash, because cash is increasing, so you have to debit there because when an asset increases, you have to record it with a debit. So 14.55, discount is the 45, and it came from Joyce T. Okay. All right. Next, we have Tasteful Restaurant settle its account in full by check. So Tasteful Restaurant was up at the top, wasn't it? Let me scroll back up there real quick. Right. So Tasteful Restaurant bought fish on credit with 900 less a 10% frequent buyer discount. Okay. So this is a this is a trade discount. So there was a part a part one to this question before the cash book. And the answer, it, it, it was asking what type of discount was applied on the 2nd, right, of May. That's a trade discount. A trade discount is not recorded, eh? It's not. It's simply deducted on the invoice and the remaining balance is what goes into the books of accounts. So Tasteful Restaurant settled its account. So 10% of 900 is 90. 900 minus 90 minus the discount will give us 810. So if Tasteful Restaurant is settling its account in full by check it means we have to go on the debit side under the bank column because it says check and put 810 coming from tasteful restaurant right so again we debit because bank is increasing and to record an increase in an asset you have to debit where did the 810 come from it came from tasteful restaurant okay next it says paid shop assistant 580 by check for wages so again we're paying wages a payment will cause cash or bank to decrease. They are both assets. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. It will go under the bank column because we are paying by check. So under the bank column, we see 580. What was being paid? Wages. Okay. On the 24th, it says settled wholesale suppliers account in full by check. Okay, so this is where we made a credit purchase a bit higher. Let's go back up. Right, so here it says bought 1700 worth of meats from wholesale suppliers on credit. The credit terms given, give the given term, sorry, with 5 slash 10, N slash 30. Right. So this is something that apparently a lot of kids are not, either they don't know or they don't understand. So let me explain it. 5 slash 10 means that we get 5% discount if we pay within 10 days. N slash 30 means we get none, right, but we have to pay within 30 days. So 5 slash 10, 5% discount in 10 days, net 30, as in the final amount has to be paid within 30 days, but no discount is applied. Um, if it's paid at that point in time. So 17, so this is on the 15th, right? And we're paying it on the 24th. So that's nine days. So we are definitely within the 10 day window. So we're going to have to find 5% of 1700, which is 85 and subtract it from that, which is going to give us 1615, I believe, right? So on the bank, on the credit side, and again, we're crediting because we're making a payment, which will decrease bank. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're seeing 85 on the discount received, and we are paying wholesale suppliers, right? And finally, we're seeing paid 260 in cash for some repairs to the shop. So we're making a payment. Again, we're going to go on the credit side. We're going to put 260 on the cash because cash is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. And we're going to see shop repairs in the details there. All right, now we're going to see the balance carried down for cash on the credit side and that's going to be brought down on the debit side there right sorry let me give you some totals to add some context there um, right so what happened is that um, it seems that we we had more items on the credit side for bank which means that bank ended up with a balance being carried down from the debit side which means we ended up with an overdraft of 365 because we spent more money than we had in the bank okay all right so we have a one or two little extra things let me just rearrange my screen Okay, so it says here, using the form provided below, prepare and close the discount allowed account. Okay, so discount allowed is an expense, right? And you're seeing that I have a discount allowed account down here as well. Let me just pop back real quick to the cash book, right? So in the cash book, the total for discount allowed was $45, right? So we need to enter that on the debit side, right? So it says total discount allowed as per cash book. And when they say close it, Right? To close an expense account, you have to transfer that amount to the income statement or income summary according to how you learned it. Right? And to transfer it out means you go on the opposite side to where the balance currently exists and you make an entry there to remove that balance from the account. So discount allowed is an expense. It has a debit balance and therefore we credit the account to remove it from there and transfer it to the income statement. And again, because it's an expense, it will go to the debit of the income statement. 
All right, another piece of the question here is asking, what is the significance of the balance remaining in Mr. Martinez's bank account at month end? Okay, so if we jump back there very quickly, we're going to see it's on the credit side. Again, it's a bank overdraft, which means you spent more money than you had in the bank. So that is classified as a current liability. Okay, going back across to the other information, it says list and calculate the total value of revenue expenditure in the month of May for Mr. Martinez. Okay, give me a second, let me rearrange some stuff. Okay, so revenue expenditure is any expenditure that is not spent to acquire new fixed assets or to improve significantly the value of said fixed assets. So we could look for expenditure on the credit side of the cash book. So we have electricity, we have wages, we have wages again, um, that's purchases and shop repairs. Okay, so let's plug it in. So we have the electricity, wages, repairs, Discount a lot is an expense. I almost forgot that, right? Purchases, 1615, and then the total there was 3590. Okay, so that's about it for this question, guys. If you guys have any questions, if you spot any errors, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to check out more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Check out my website for free PA handouts. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Bye.